Welcome back. I'm Josh Vandre here to talk Ansible for network automation. And today we're going to gather information from network devices. At this end of the session, we're going to dig into a little bit more updating the Ansible config file that's going to help manipulate your Ansible environment. We're going to gather data from various devices. We're going to use command modules for iOS, CLI command, which this is going to be applicable to the other modules as well. And then we're going to use iOS facts to gather iOS specific facts and put it into the Ansible facts variable. We'll take a look at that and that also applies to various other vendors as well. First, when we take a look at the Ansible config file, there's going to be several things that help to modify the Ansible environment. We'll take a look a little bit deeper. You can look for yourself on the Ansible documents as well. I encourage you to take a look. It is quite the list, and we'll just gather a couple of them that I found handy over my years here. The order of which Ansible looks in the environment is important here. First, we take a look at the environmental variable. If you have in the environmental variable, all uppercase Ansible underscore config, wherever that de is defined, that's where it looks first. The next piece, which is the one I like to modify the most, is an ansible.cfg file within the project folder. It looks there and picks up the file. Third on the list is the ansible.cfg file or .ansible.cfg file in your home directory. That's going to be there for defaults. And then lastly, it's going to look in the etsy slash ansibles slash ansible.cfg. So today's demo, we're going to take a look at a couple of modules for gathering information from Cisco iOS devices, which are CLI command and iOS command. CLI command is the generic from Ansible, Red Hat themselves. And then the second one is the iOS command, which was written to interact with iOS devices themselves. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at what iOS facts looks like and what that can do for you. Okay, let's take a look at the Ansible config file here. That's in my directory, ansible.cfg. Here we've got at the very top is it's an INI file effectively so it's going off of at the top we've got square brackets and defaults which categorizes where it's at. We define here we've got the inventory we're calling what the default inventory file is if you do not invoke an inventory file with your playbooks. And then we have host key checking in our lab. We're turning that off here. We don't need that in the lab environment. You'll want to make sure to consult your security team when looking at this on yourself. And then the library, that's where you'll be able to find more information, more modules. Retry files enabled. On the network world, I really like setting this one to false. This way, when Ansible runs, typically if a play fails or a task fails on a particular device, it will create what's called a retry file. And from that retry file, you can go and rerun your Ansible playbook. Most network devices, we're looking at Ansible for item potency and such, so go ahead and leave that enabled. Gathering, we set this to explicit. By doing this, Ansible, the control node that runs the Ansible playbooks, will not have its information gathered. So with network devices, it's good if you had that enabled, the facts that are gathered about are about your local machine. So if that's on your Mac or on your PC that's running or your Linux host, that's what you're going to get, you're not going to get facts about the actual network device. And then I set action uh, warnings to false. There's a couple things that don't really impact the Ansible execution that are having warnings come up. And I just don't want to have to show that. That's the Ansible config file. All right, let's take a look at all the files that we've got here. I've got a few that we're going to run through, and we're going to start with gathering information from network devices. The first one we're going to take a look at is the get info for number one. We're going to build upon things, and so we're going to take a look at the plays a little bit uh, one by one and continue to iterate and take a look at their outputs. So on this, we our first play, play number one at the top there, name is good documentation with Ansible. It's not required, but it is strongly recommended, and it helps to others to understand what's going on. Going on. We have our connection as network CLI, which is what you should be using for most network devices in this day and age. And then WAN routers is going to be the devices that we're going to connect to and for our hosts. First task in this, we're going to go ahead and gather the NTP associations. I think this is a pretty safe command to be able to show the connection and have some show information. And then we're going to register is going to be the keyword here. We're going to register that to a new variable called show NTP. As we look at task number two, we've got a debug. We're going to take a look at that command open. Put. When developing playbooks, I really strongly encourage the use of debugs. This is not uh, something that you should ignore or take lightly. Whenever I'm doing playbook development, I am taking a look at what the variable looks like. Even as an uh, Ansible veteran for several years now, I still want to see and verify what is in my variable. So that is what the playbook will look like. And let's go ahead and execute that playbook. So we're going to go Ansible-playbook. 
and then we're going to do get info one dot yaml we could put dash i and put the inventory file on here but again going back to the ansible config file that's implied if it's not deployed all right we've got our play one going out we're going to go ahead and ssh and get the ntp association information then we get our output here. We see that we have various pieces within individual items. So router four, we get connected to, we have a changed, a failed, which are both set to false. And that's the same on router three as well. And then we get the output. So we have our standard out that we have our output that's all mangled together. And then one of the nice things from uh, these commands is they've also put these in lines. So that way it looks a little bit easier for you to see. And we take a look at the standard out lines. All right, let's take a look at that second get info file that's building off the first one. We've got our same first play with task one, task two being exactly the same. Now we have task three. We're gonna use the iOS command module and we're gonna gather CDP information and IP routing information in the same execution. So we have our commands. We see here we have a list here of show CDP neighbor and show IP route 192.168.1.0. So we'll go ahead and get those and then we'll put those in the command output and then we'll take a look at the debug to see what that looks like because it will be a little bit different. So we'll do Ansible playbook again, get info two. And that's going to go ahead as SSHing out. It's running the commands. It's output it. And then it's got the commands again. And then as we scroll back, we'll take a look at what the command output looks like. Here we've got some a switch and a router in CDP that we can kind of see. And then we've got the routing entries in, in the table as well. And then we've got the same for CDP neighbors and then the routing entry again. So that's what we've taken a look at there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one as well, get info 3yaml On this, here we've got the first same four tasks that we just saw on the previous one, but now we've got a second play. This is play two, we're going to go ahead and gather data from the routers and we're going to use the Ansible provided CLI command. So this is a little more generic. You can use this on Juniper, Dell OS, and various others. Take a look at the CLI command documentation. They are continuously evolving what devices that can connect to. In play two, We've got task number one, where we're going to go ahead and get this NTP associations. And then we're going to take a look at that output again as well. So now we'll go ahead and Ansible playbook, get info three. And as we run that, we'll go step through. We have the SSH again in, and now it's run the first couple. Now we've got the output. It looks a little bit different. We'll take a look at the difference here in just a moment between CLI command and iOS command and get the exact differences of what that really looks like. All right, we've taken a look at a couple of ways how do we can gather information from iOS specific devices. We're going to take a look at the differences between the command modules. So we're going to take a look at this other file that I've put together that really helps to show this information. We're going to compare. Here, we're going to run it against one device, not multiple devices to help show the differences in the output. And this is where the debugging becomes really valuable. So we have task one, we're going to get NTP associations from the devices using iOS command. And then task two, we're going to do that same command, but this time with CLI command. And then task three and task four, we're going to go ahead and debug those and print those out to the screen. So we can take a look at those a little bit more. So we'll take Ansible playbook, get info, compare. And let's go ahead and give this an execution. First, we're going to obviously use the commands to come in and take a look. Now we've got a couple different outputs. So in task three, the debug for iOS command and some of the earlier command modules that came out, we see here that we've got the standard out and we've got square braces. This really tells us that it's a list of things. So when we took a look at the playbook that we were getting two pieces of information, we can identify the first command with a dot zero a little bit later, and then the second command with dot one. So it really helps to differentiate which command. With CLI command, you're going ahead and you're getting a string input and you're getting a string output. You don't see any curly braces on the standard out, curly braces or square braces. Since there's no square braces, you can access that directly with that variable dot standard out. And we'll provide a link for a little more detail on how to take a look at those information as well. Last thing I want to 
leave with you is taking a look at the iOS fax module. We're going to go ahead and take a look at it in a playbook here. I've got a single play that we're going to go ahead on task number one, gather information from the network device. It's We have the fax here, iOS fax for the module, gather subset. You could gather the configuration of the device this way, and that's the running configuration. Since we don't really care about the running configuration, and that will just make our output be super long and a little bit annoying, we're going to go ahead and not gather that. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Ansible facts and you'll see the whole list. And then lastly, the last task, if you want to go ahead and see what version of code your iOS devices are running, this is something that's going to be very handy for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at this playbook. Get iOS facts. First plate, we're connecting to each of the routers, one, two, three, and four that we have in the environment, and we're gathering the facts. It's gathering information about interfaces, memory free, et cetera, gathering all that information, and then it's going to put this into a the Ansible facts for us. All right, as we take a look then, we have a whole bunch of facts about the devices. We're only going to go scroll back up and take a look at one particular device, this is for router three. We can see that we have all the addresses on it, all the IPv6 as well. We keep on going. We've got the file system, what's on there, how much space is free on the file system. Then we've got the gather subset of information about just what did we actually gather, the host name, the interfaces. So here we can start to see the entire configuration. We can see the address, the subnet mask that's associated with it. Continuing still on down, we have our neighbors. So this is with CDP information. If CDP isn't running, it may gather it from LLDP. We've got the serial number. We've got the version. And then the last one, we went ahead and said, well, okay, let's go ahead and print out all the versions of all the devices. This is going to be something that you'll be able to gather pretty quick. Here, it's in a lab in a virtual environment, so they all have the same iOS image. Here is a great way to go ahead and gather more information. As we wrap up here, I just wanted to show you the iOS facts and how many things that are actually gathered from iOS facts. You can get a lot of information and be able to make some automation decisions based off of information with the device and do audits and verifications just using the iOS facts module. I encourage you to take a look at the the Ansible docs to learn more specifically about your platform. So what did we do today? We covered how to change the settings for your Ansible environment with the ansible.config file, whether that's in an environmental variable or in your local playbook directory, or lastly, in your home directory. We gathered information from iOS devices using multiple methods, and these can also be applied to other vendors as well. Just because we're doing iOS quite a bit here, that's not going to stop you from using, say, Dell OS or Juniper or others. And then we went ahead and gathered data and gained the output from that for just using iOS facts. That's going to be a handy facts piece. Take a look, all the vendors. 